In this video, I'm going to talk about unbiasedness of OLS. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to explain to you what is unbiasedness of OLS parameters. And I'm going to discuss uh, three assumptions that must be met in order for OLS parameters to be unbiased. And then I'm going to show you an example in which OLS estimates uh, will be biased or will not be unbiased. So let's talk about uh, unbiased nest first okay so remember so this is what we were interested in doing so there was like some population this could be the population of uh, a university and we want we may be interested in knowing what's the average height of uh, all these individuals one way to do is is to measure height of all uh, say 20000 students so there may be 20000 students in uh, in a university and we have to measure the height of all 20,000 students to know the average height. A simpler way would be instead of measuring height of all 20,000 students is to take a small sample, say a sample of uh, 20 students and measure their height and then calculate the average height from here. We can pick another sample of 20 students and measure their average height. So what we are assuming here is, so these are the sample heights obviously what we were interested in knowing was this population uh, height and we don't know how close our sample average height is to the population height so this is the question so if our population height or instead our sample height is equal to the population height we will say that our estimate which is height is unbiased that is there is no difference between the population parameter which is height and our sample parameter which is sample height so there is no difference between these two estimates in that case that measure will be an unbiased estimator so remember in the case of uh, a linear regression model of the form we were using sample data and we are interested in this parameter so all we want to know is whether this beta 1 it is close to the actual beta 1 so this is the actual one and this is our estimate that's why i have a hat here so our estimated beta 1 how close that beta 1 is to the actual or the population beta 1 and remember we used ols to estimate this beta 1 hat or this uh, coefficient and there are a bunch of assumptions that must be met in order for this beta 1 our estimate to be equal to the population beta 1 the actual uh, estimate the actual effect of x on y the first i discussed in an earlier video was about the linearity between x and y we believe that the effect of uh, x on y it is linear in the sense that no matter where we measure the effect of x on y it's the same so in other words we we say that there is this linear line and the slope of this line is constant everywhere so that was linearity now the random sample assumption says that the sample that we are picking from this uh, population it is picked up randomly and not systematically an example of picking a sample systematically would be if you are standing in front of uh, a basketball court and you pick 20 students and you measure their height and obviously the height of those students may be more than six feet and uh, that may not represent this whole population Right, so you are selecting a sample in a particular way. So we'll talk about this issue of sample selection later on. But here, the idea here is that the sample is not random. So sample that we are picking from the population must be random rather than systematic. So we'll talk about what happens if the sample is not random in, uh, in the future. Now, zero conditional means that there is no correlation between this variable x and uh, u. Okay, so if any of these assumptions is not met, 
than the estimate that we will get using OLS and sample data that will not be equal to the population parameter or we'll say that our estimate is biased. Obviously, this is what we don't want. We want this beta 1 parameter that we estimate to be as close to the actual beta 1 parameter as possible. Okay, so these are some of the assumptions that must be met in order for in order for the OLS estimates to be unbiased. So here is an example. And in this example, we want to estimate the effect of a federally funded school lunch program on student performance as measured by their test score in math in 10th grade. So what we are interested in knowing whether participation in the lunch program has an impact on their performance as measured by their test score. As always, the first thing we have to do is we have to understand our data. So our independent variable or explanatory variable is the percentage of students in, uh, in a lunch program. So remember, it's the percent. It is represented in percentage. And math 10, it is again represented in percent. So it's the percent of students passing a math score. So what we assumed here that we expect this beta 1 parameter to be positive. And if students are participated in a lunch program, we expect that they will be well fed and uh, it will result in a higher math score. So let's look at uh, what happens if we regress math score on uh, the lunch program. So here's our beta 1 parameter. So what this beta 1 parameter is telling us is that if students eligibility in a lunch program increases by one percentage points, remember that both our independent and dependent variables are represented in percentage. In this case, our interpretation will be if x variable increases by one percentage point, the resulting effect on y variable will be beta one percentage points. So remember this. So in this case, if student eligibility in the lunch program increases by one percentage point, then the percent of students passing the lunch exam falls by 0.32 percentage points. So remember, this beta 1 coefficient, it tells us two things. First, the direction of the relationship, which in this case is inverse or negative, which means if lunch program increases, math score decreases. The magnitude means how much is the effect. So these are the two things that this beta 1 parameter is telling us the direction of the relationship, which is negative, and the magnitude, which is 0 0.32. Why are we, uh, this is what we hope to achieve. We thought that beta 1 is equal to the actual or the population beta parameter. But this is not what is happening here. So remember, I talked about earlier that if any of the assumption of uh, OLS is not met, then these estimates could be biased which means this beta 1 parameter is not equal to the actual beta parameter. So here is uh, the term that we have to look for. So remember the third assumption that the expected value of u given x is 0. That is, there is no correlation between these two variables. So let's assume. So this variable is capturing the effect of all the omitted variables. The variables, those are not included in this regression equation. For example, let's assume this variable. So this variable is captured by this u. So see, people or students, those are poor, they are more likely to be enrolled in this lunch program and they are more likely to perform poor in the math school. So see, uh, there is a correlation between u and uh, x, which is not equal to zero which means our beta 1 hat is not equal to beta 1 parameter so there is biasedness in our estimate so later on uh, we'll talk about how to deal with the these types of uh, problems in a regression modeling framework so this is what happens if uh, any of the assumptions of ols is not met our estimates become biased all right See you in the next video. Bye-bye.